Hi there. This is an example of using the chi-square test to test data against the normal distribution. So the data I'm dealing with here is ages. So these are the ages of CEOs in Fortune 500 companies. And I've got a number of them there, 60 or so. Um, the first thing I'm going to do, well, Generally, we would do some basic descriptive statistics to just see what our data looks like. So what's the mean? We'll say equals average. So the mean age is 51. The standard deviation equals standard deviation of a sample and I'll show up where the numbers are enter so average is 51.4 with the standard devi deviation of 8.9 now to do the chi-square test I have to somehow organize this data into a frequency distribution of some sort because I have to because I'm looking at observed frequencies and expected frequencies. One way of doing that is to convert the data to a normal dis to a standard normal distribution. Uh, and then I can sort of use the standard deviations to set up some preliminary bins. So to do that, I'm going to take each of my ages here and find a z value, the relevant z value. So I'm going to convert all my x's into z's here. And to do, to do that with Excel, I use the standardize function. So standardize. I show it where the value of x is. So in this case, it will be a2, comma, I go down, show it where the mean is. That's an absolute reference, comma, and then show it where the standard deviation is. And that's another absolute reference. So I enter. So that age of 53, that's a z value of 0.171. I'm going to copy that and get z values for all of my data points here. So anything under the mean is a negative number. Anything over the mean is a positive number. So I'm going to set up bins from starting at minus 2 standard deviations from 0 and going up to 3. So my observed frequency, I can do a histogram. So I could go to the data analysis tool pack and grab the histogram tool and show it my z values, show it my bins, and do a histogram. I'm going to show you another way to do that because there, Excel does have something called a frequency tool. Frequency tool is an array function. So for an array function, they operate a little differently. You have to select all of the cells that you want it to uh, do calculations and then say equals and then start typing frequency. So I want the frequency function. And it says, OK, where's your data? So I will show it where all my Z values are, comma. And then it wants the bins array, so I show it where my bins are. So very similar to the histogram tool. Now for an array function, you don't just press enter. You actually have to hold down the control key, the shift key, and then press enter. And when I do that, it's gone and it's taken all of my z values and it's sorted them out into the appropriate bins. From this, I can calculate, or I can now calculate the expected probabilities 
for a normal distribution. So what do I normally, what would I normally, what's the probability of finding a value of z less than minus 2? So to do that, I say equals norm, and it's actually normal standard distribution. This returns the standard normal distribution. And all I have to do is tell it the z value, right? It, because it knows mean and standard deviation for a standard deviation. So I say minus 2 comma true. For a continuous distribution, I'm always talking about cumulative probabilities. So I want the probability of getting a value of z less than or equal to minus 2. And that's my expected probability. For the next one, I want what's the probability of getting a value between minus 2 and minus 1.5. So this is going to be equal to normal standard distribution 0.5 comma true minus normal standard distribution of minus 2 comma true. Miss the last parentheses. I need to put that parentheses in. Ah. So the next one I want the expected, I want the probability of getting a value between minus 1 and minus 1.5. The way I set this up with relative references, I should be able to copy this down for all of the remaining probabilities. And our, it's almost equal to 1 because there is, we're not counting the probability of getting a value greater than 3. So that's the missing part there. So my expected frequency is just going to be these probabilities times the total number of observations. Because I have a 0 0.0227 probability of seeing a value less than minus 2. So out of 60, I would expect to see equals that probability times 60. And that has to be an absolute reference, E13. So I can copy those down and get my expected frequencies. However, I now have a problem because I know that one of the rules for using chi-square is that my expected frequencies have to be greater than 5. And I have five of these different cells where I would be doing calculations for chi-square that have expected frequencies less than 5. And that's sort of expected because as we get out to the tails of the normal distribution, I'm going to have very small probabilities of, of fitting in, of getting numbers in those bins. So what I need to do is just combine some of my uh, bins. So I've got another sort of set of bins down here. I'm going to take everything up to and including and including minus 1 as one bin. And then I'll go to minus 0.5, 0, 0 0.5, 1, and I'll take everything between 1 and 3 into the last bin. So that should get rid of my uh, less than 5 values for expected frequencies. So again, I'm going to say, I'm going to select all of the cells here, say equals frequency. My data array is my z values, comma. My bins are, these are my new bins. And I hold down Control Shift and press Enter. So now I've got my 60 
ages or Z values sorted out into um, those new bins. Expected probability. I should be able actually to, again, just the way I've set this up, I should be able to copy that to here and then copy that formula down for the rest. So I've got probabilities associated with each of those bins. My expected frequency is equal to that probability times 60. That's an absolute reference. F4. Copy that down. So there's my expected frequencies. I now can do my chi-square calculation. So the chi-square calculation for this cell is going to be equal to my observed frequency minus my expected frequency. I'm going to put brackets around that because I have to square it. So for square, I use the little hat symbol. So that's to the power of 2. And then I'm going to put brackets around again because I'm not sure of my order of operations uh, because I want that value divided by the expected frequency. I do that for each of my cells. And then at the very bottom here, I've added them up. So I can see that the total is 4.550643. That's my calculated chi-square. My degrees of freedom, um, I used 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 cells. But for I always lose one degree of freedom, and then for the normal distribution, I use another two degrees of freedom because I actually had to use my data to calculate both the mean and the standard deviation. So I calculated two parameters. So that means I have six cells minus three, so I have three degrees of freedom. To calculate my critical chi-square, I say equals equals chi-square chi inverse is the function I want. Uh, I want a 0 0.95 probability, comma, with three degrees of freedom. So my critical chi-square is 7.81. So if you remember, for chi-square, my hypothesis was that the age data fits a normal distribution. Since the calculated value of chi-square is less than the critical value I cannot reject the hypothesis this means that I can assume that the data fits a normal distribution. So that's my conclusion. So my chi-square test says, yes, I can be 95% confident that this age data does fit, uh, is a good fit for a normal distribution.